Welcome to First Congregational Church in Guilford, Connecticut, where we say, whoever you are and wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Today, I am at the Guilford Farmers Market. We come down to support our farmers because they truly are a gift to our town and beyond on the shoreline, and they offer us amazing homegrown food. So if you get a chance, come celebrate them. As we gather, there are several things this morning that will be going on. It's the summer service, and so at 9 o'clock we'll be gathering rather than 10. We'll continue this tradition and through Labor Day, and then we'll move back to the 10 o'clock service. Wherever you are, please take a few moments to find your comfortable place to sit or to stand or to walk and to listen. Be still. Know that God is God and let us be grateful that we are not God. Let us release the ways that we have misspoken and misstepped and missed the mark of love throughout the week. As we quiet our internal selves and recognize the external world will always be noisy, let us take a deep breath in, breathing in the breath of God. Let us breathe out the love of God. We continue now with a passage that's from the First Nations Bible. It's in the book of Ephesians chapter three. The way that it is written reminds us of the beauty of God's creation and who we are to each other. It begins. For this reason, the inclusion of all into the sacred family of God, I bow and humble myself before the Creator, for whom every family in heaven and on earth derives its name. I pray that out of God's great treasures of beauty, the Creator will give you the Spirit's mighty power and strength in your inner being. In this way, Christ, the Chosen One, will make home in your heart. And I pray that as you trust in God, your roots will grow deep into the soil of God's love. And from these roots, you will draw strength and courage needed to travel this sacred path together with God's holy people. The path of love is higher than the stars, deeper than the great waters, and wider than the sky. Yes, this love comes from and reaches to all directions. Now I pray you will feel how deep the Chosen One's great love is. It is a love that goes beyond our small and weak ways of thinking. This love fills us with the Great Spirit, the one who fills all things. I am praying to the Maker of Life that who by their power working in us can do far more than we ask more than our narrow minds can imagine. To God be the glory in our sacred family and in Christ Jesus throughout all the generations, forever and ever. May God grant us wisdom and understanding to this passage. Amen. Today I'm going to begin engaging the passage from a bit more of a personal view, if you will. I invite you to take notes and work with it from your personal situation today. Recently, I had a minor health scare. Now, I am your typical only take a vitamin and mostly have appointments with orthopedic doctors type of person. Going in for tests and more tests caused me to fall or to dive into a bit of a spin. At the same time, we were receiving conflicting messages about a healing procedure for Milton's ears, we were led to believe it would bring my spouse, one of the most extroverted people ever, back into social settings. Perhaps you can sense the troublesome scene and the elements that might surround it. I imagine you too have experienced those situations that kept you up at night. Even if you practice all the healthy sleep rituals, meditative prayer, dark room, lavender scent, cool space, no screens, breathing techniques, etc., your mind continues to roam. Now, while I tossed and turned and interrupted sleep or paced an empty waiting room, I kept hearing today's text. So the chosen one will make a home in your heart. 
The chosen one will make a home in your heart. Jesus has a home in my heart, in your heart, and has a heart for the world. This Christ, this one who is love incarnate, was with me in the sleepless twilight hours, in the lonely hospital halls, and in the dismay that filled the quiet car ride home too. In the same type of spaces, Christ is also with you. And yet we ask this question, what does that even mean? Christ is with us. In the little book of Philippians, we read that through Christ, there is a peace that passes all human understanding. In my first parish setting as a youth minister, one young person had experienced the death of a parent and another was a victim of abuse. As we met and we explored Philippians, we began to talk about the funky peace, that inner and odd peace that somehow finds us and covers us in the midst of sorrow, turmoil, fright, and uncertainty. Last week, our guest preacher spoke about the mystery of God and of our faith. The mystery of faith and funky peace are aspects that cannot be qualified. Yet, like the wind, we feel them, we sense them, and we see their effects. As I prepared for today, more words from Ephesians followed me. And I pray that as I trust in God, your roots will grow deep in the soil of God's love. And from these roots, you will draw strength and courage needed to travel the sacred path together with God's holy people. Strength and courage from God to face whatever we encounter alone and together strength and courage to face whatever we encounter alone and together. What a powerful and power-filled gift. And while I struggled with my own concerns, I, I needed to move beyond myself. I began praying that all our beloveds who are ill, wandering, uncertain, isolated, or lonely would feel this Ephesian strength and courage as well as know that we are all traveling in sacred love together. Obviously, I still prayed for myself, but I needed to include others in the wider journey, the community that's all about us. Like the pandemic, where we said we might be apart, but we're together. Apart together as a community of faith, we are. On any of those nights, in the external quiet and the internal swirl of chaos, perhaps we could join together in self-prayer and community prayer too. Maybe we can say the names of our family and our friends and go through the church directory, even speaking aloud, those who need to feel our collective strength. This week, we've been asked to add another name to our wider community, Sonia Massey. The elements surrounding a police shooting of a woman who called 911 may feel surreal to many of us but not to the wider black or brown communities. If you don't know the story, please research it. In our country, beyond the obvious racism, sexism, and phobias we face, we seem to be afraid of one another. Anyone who read, listened to, or watched the news this past week has witnessed profound fear. It has played out in many ways. Those who have typically governed our country feel a shift. People wonder what's next. Who are we? How will we go forward? What is happening? The faces are changing. Now, beyond partisan affiliations, this is a historical moment. We now have a woman of African and South Asian descent as the probable candidate for president. The voices of little girls who look like her are cheering. And those in the misogynistic racist camps are openly, openly verbalizing hate about her gender, her race, and her motherhood. Hear me clearly. I am not talking about those who are voting for a different party than hers. I am naming that there is hate aimed at her. 
we are at yet again in another crucial time to counter fear and hate. Our words are important. Our actions matter. Thinking beyond ourselves is necessary. Praying for others, even those whom we can't abide, and ourselves to release hatred, fear, and exclusivity is essential to build an equitable and peaceful world. When we pray for others or know that someone is praying for us, there is power, connection, comfort, and hope. A simple example. Last week, I couldn't make a Zumba class because of a medical appointment. When my instructor inquired if I would be there the next day, I paused and said I was having some tests. She touched my shoulder and said she would pray for me. I was surprised and I was deeply moved by her rare offer. It sounds so basic, but imagine what a kind word can do for someone. What if the officer who killed Sonia Massey after he told her to move a pot of boiling water from the stove would have instead said, please be careful, I don't want you to get burned. The life snuffed out and the life of regret could have been so different. As Dr. King said, whatever affects one directly affects us all indirectly. We must train ourselves and others to practice responding to each other as human to human, beyond economics, beyond gender, beyond race, beyond ethnicity, beyond religion, beyond non-religion, beyond anything. We are human to human. The imagination of God holds more than the calamity before us. As the text noted, God moves in our inner being. The Spirit's wider view of life is not only accessible to us, but abides in us, dwells in us, and lives in us. I want to hope that we will embrace the holy, grab the Spirit in new ways, ways that counter shootings hate and fear. One commentator reflected that beyond culture and tradition, this passage tells the readers that God is apparent to all humanity. The author of these verses is spiritually aware that God is inclusive of all people, nations, genders, and ethnicities. In other words, the language of family is in the author's heart, mind, and soul. This prayer for the Ephesians emphasizes that prayer would strengthen in their hearts and open new possibilities in their congregations. Well, we are hoping to open new possibilities in our congregation as we begin preparing for visioning this fall, exploring how our gifts meet the needs of our church communities and the wider community. We will reflect, meditate, study, and pray. With the spirit alive in our inner being, let's imagine how love, our love, our intentional acts of love can and will change the story of our lives together. We have to go out in love now, for there is great work to do. Amen. Thank you.